Yeah. Bill St. James, that was beautiful. I'm honored to receive this SAGE Award. I, I want to thank James and Phyllis Hildreth for nominating us. They're former recipients and I admire the work they've done. And there are so many other former, former recipients that I know who I admire that I'm honored to be in this new group of honorees. I want to thank all who have come here to support me and my husband, Ed, my husband for 49 years and partner in life. <laughs> and I want to give a special thanks, a special shout out to my sister, Carrie Jones, and her husband, Franklin, who drove here from Louisville to be here to support us. And all my friends from Metropolitan Church, Meharry, the Links, 50 Forward, Holland and Knight, uh, David Louie Bar Association, and all the other members of the bar. I do need to correct one thing that's in the bio, with my bio. It says that I was the first woman partner and the first black partner. I was not the first woman partner. I was not the first black partner, but I was the first black female, the first African-American female at Waller. So I want to clear that up for the record. Okay? <laughs> now, um, I give God the glory for everything that I've accomplished in my life, uh, but I want to dedicate this award to my parents, Margaret and Joseph Bowers, who are in heaven watching down on us today. They gave me a foundation of love and nurture, spiritual guidance and grounding, and instilled in me and my other siblings the importance of helping others, serving the community, and giving back. I grew up in Louisville, Kentucky, which was part of the Jim Crow South. And my parents shielded us as much as they could from the indignities of racism and segregation. My father was an accountant and my mother was a librarian. We were surrounded by excellence in our home, in our schools, in our church, and our social community. My, my parents told me we could be anything we wanted to be, but we ha would have to work twice as hard to get half as much. They taught us to put God first and to treat people fairly. They told us to fight against injustice and to help others. So I thank my parents today and I wish to thank Agewell for this acknowledgement. Thank you, Billy. I'm sure that just hearing her, you know and understand why I refer to her all the time as my better three quarters. <laughs> and gaining every day. But I do thank God for this opportunity and to be able to share in celebrating this moment. And I want to say with all of you, because there is a way that this business of aging is something that I have come to appreciate more and more, not in ways that reflect anything that is of any way negative, but rather the ways in which so many things that we have learned along the way become a part of our everyday reality in a fashion such that it helps to shape and nurture and help us to grow and develop. Billy's words of reflection as she spoke about her family were very significant to me because I actually had a very similar, a very similar experience in life. Uh, my birth father died when I was 11 years old. When I was 11 years old, I had already lived in 11 different places. My father was what I call an upwardly mobile Methodist preacher. <laughs> if, you, if you're doing things that are making a difference in the Methodist church, it ends up being recognize in a way that very often moves you over and over again. For me, that meant that I lived, I first remember being alive in Lebanon, Tennessee, 
I went from Lebanon to McMinnville, from McMinnville to Nashville, from Nashville to Little Rock, Arkansas, from Little Rock, Arkansas to Pine Bluff, Arkansas, and all of that's on top of the fact that I was born in Memphis, Tennessee. But there's so many things about Nashville that have been significant for me and to me. The things that I think about most often in many ways reflect many of you in this room because there are ways in which the challenges of allowing this place to become home have been many, some of which I smile about. I came to Nashville now 53, getting ready to be 54 years ago, but 53 years ago. One of my great experiences when I first came to Nashville was after I'd been here at Fisk University working as an assistant dean in the academic office. I found myself in a situation where little things that I had cherished before I came. When I left Memphis after high school, I went to Connecticut where I stayed until I made a little trip down to town to New York City and the Long Island. But I remember one of my first thoughts, people ask me, what do you remember most about coming to Nashville? I find it most memorable when I reflect on the fact that when I'd been here just a short period of time, I asked someone, where can I get a bagel? <laughs> I want you to have a feel for just how well uh, the environment for my aging has been supported in this city. And then a few weeks after that, I had the occasion where being governed as I often am in life by that which represents my dietary interests, I found myself asking the question, and what about some sushi? <laughs> then I realized that uh, I was in a different environment than I had been in for the number of years i had been on the East Coast. But the other thing that I learned was that I had a tremendous opportunity and that opportunity manifested itself in terms of ways in which I was able to be involved in the faith community here in Nashville. The faith community here in Nashville is of historic meaning and significance. I was blessed that when I was 14 years old, James Morris Lawson came to be my pastor at Centenary United Methodist Church in Memphis, Tennessee. I also have to acknowledge the fact that just a few weeks ago, uh, I was 13, I was 14 when James Lawson came to be my pastor. I was 14 and he was 33. I flew to LA a few weeks ago to celebrate his 95th birthday, recognizing that I was now 71. <laughs> but what has been most significant for me is to have an opportunity to try and play a role in shaping the character, the culture, and indeed the deep and significant meaning of this community into the things that had been foundational for me in life. Metropolitan Interdenominational Church is the hub around which everything I do in life is focused. People very often talk about all the things of preaching, teaching, and working all around the world, but the fact is it all is, is centered in the way in which Nashville, Tennessee has become a place where I've had the opportunity to interact with so many of you who are committed to the business of making sure that we are all the things that we ideally search and seek and try to be as a people, a one people and a people who are able to rise above fragmentation, division, and the things that so often get in our way. You've been great partners, all of you, in your various ways of helping to be a part of the things that we have done. I'll give you the words of Metropolitan Interdenominational Church and I think as you appreciate the work that we have done to recognize those things as being our calling, you'll understand why we continue to do the things we do the way we do them. And that statement is just simply this. The Metropolitan Interdenominational Church is a community of believers, inclusive of all and alienated to none, leading the way to spiritual growth by sharing God's love with the world. That's what we're about all the time. And that takes us a lot of places. And that takes us into arenas and into environments that sometimes people have a response 
that it can carry with it a little bit of a shock. But what I have to say is that in Nashville, there have been those whose footsteps we've been able to walk in, and it's made a significant difference. So as I look at all of you, I almost could begin to start calling you by name. I was looking around a minute ago and trying to see if there was at least one person at every table that in some way, one way or another, I've come in contact with. But the fact is, if it's the person that I have not come in contact with yet, you notice I say, yet. <laughs> 76 years old, I am today, but there's a lot to be done. I thank God for my mom and for the many words that came from my mom and from my dad. But I will tell you this, I said to someone a little while ago, one of my favorite statements is, the older I get, the smarter my mother gets. <laughs> So I thank God for her and the way in which she did everything she could to lead God and direct my life to be a part of this moment. So I have to recognize those who came my way and were able to impact my life in a fashion that continues each and every day. So come and visit Metropolitan and Denominational Church, not all at once. <laughs> we couldn't fit all of you in the room at the same time. But there's a good group of folks from Metropolitan that are here today, and I thank God for all of you for continuing to help us do the work we do. God bless you. God keep you. Thank you.